Stacy Ann Forrester, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, you are joining us from Medellin, Colombia. Um, so I'm excited to talk about Medellin also in addition to talking about things astrology um, and where we find ourselves in this moment. This is uh, September 2022, almost October, and we have something like six planets in retrograde something mm -hmm. like that and so things i want to touch on that um a little bit later in the conversation but uh, maybe first if you could introduce yourself and tell us what you do and uh who you do it for and why mm -hmm. So first, thank you for having me. I'm excited to have this conversation uh, too, especially around the, the Saturn return and then uh, later on the retrogrades. So I'm Stacey Ann Forrester and I'm an astrologer for women who are releasing old ways of being while also embracing their new path forward. And so my main tool for supporting women in these uh, transitions of growth is astrology. Uh, astrology has been a tool that's been so important in my life to my development. And now I get to do it for a living. And why I do what, what I do is because, you know, I spent about seven years working in global health and international development. And it was a career about supporting countries, economies, um, health systems. So it was that broader, big perspective. Um, and now with astrology, I get to focus on the individual. And I do believe a lot of what we're seeing in the world in terms of um, things that are not working well, um, the different traumas that people have experienced, and how we treat our, our environment, how we treat nature is all connected to us as individuals and our relationships with ourselves, And so my focus is on the individual in hopes that the individual can make a greater impact on the world around them. Hmm. Yeah. And so how did you get drawn to astrology as opposed to like therapy or any other modality? So astrology came into my awareness when I was 15 years old. It was a time that I was not feeling very connected to uh, my family of origin. And it just, I felt like an outsider. I felt I didn't belong and why? <laughs> you know, the, the first place that you should belong to is your family. Um, and so when I picked up a book in the library about astrology, and I read about what I thought was my sun sign at the time, which Aquarius, um, for different reasons, I'm actually a Capricorn. So I'm mm -hmm. right at the edge mm -hmm. of uh, Capricorn season. So I didn't really know um, at that time that I was really a uh, Capricorn sun. So when I read the information about Aquarius sun, it really fit. It told me that, yes, this feeling of being an outsider is real, it's valid. And that's, that's um, part of who you are. That's part of your experience. Um, fast forward years later, I learned that I am an Aquarius rising. So that still holds true um, for that experience. But, you know, at 15 years old, um, having just that window um, into an aspect of self that was having a hard time naming, um, it, it just solidified, yes, this is something, this is a tool that's going to be really helpful. And throughout the years, I've, you know, I've read horoscopes, I've um, done my my chart, I've worked with astrologers, but it was never, it was never something that I thought I would do for a living. Mm -hmm. And so how did that come to be? Like, how did you decide that this was something you want to do for a living? And how did you have the courage to go ahead and do it? Oh, great question. So it came back in a really strong way. Um, towards the end of my first Saturn return. So this is a wonderful conversation for us to be having because I am someone who is very Saturnian. I have Saturn in a very prominent place in, in my chart and I have other placements between Capricorn and Aquarius, which are signs that are ruled by Saturn. So towards the end of my first Saturn return is when I realized that the path that I've been on was not what I wanted anymore didn't want to go any further in that career path. And so I didn't know what I was going to do. 
Um, I didn't know it was going to be astrology, but I knew what I didn't want. And I knew I had to release that old way. And I did. And when I came, I went, I was at the time I was living in Washington, D.C., uh, again, working in global health and international development. I was building a comp helping to build a consulting firm at the time, too. So I had a lot of responsibilities. Um, it was had like five jobs, basically. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I returned to um, California, which is where I completed my graduate work. And it was that place that felt more like me. And I had a network there, had friends. And so I was like, where can I return to that felt, that, that feels more like me? And so I went back to California and went on a seven to eight year journey of this new life that I find myself in. Mm -hmm. And in terms of the courage, I think that comes from Saturn. Mm -hmm. um, it also probably comes from other aspects in my chart. Say I'm an Aries moon. A lot of courage comes from that archetype of Aries. But I think with with Saturn, um, Saturn is a lot about integrity, wanting the insides to match the outsides. Mm -hmm. So, you know, aligning up to who I've now become was really important to me. I just can't do something just to do it. Mm -hmm. It has to feel right for me. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm, I don't, I could do anything. I could do the effort. Um, I'm good at doing hard things, but the hard things have to be worth it. Right. Mm -hmm. So there's a sense of like, I don't mind taking on responsibility, but why? And what what is that responsibility for if it doesn't lead to something productive if i'm not um able to be in service to other people then what's the point mm -hmm. so yeah that's just more insights into me and how my relationship with saturn mm -hmm. and how it's helped me develop into um these these new paths that are mm -hmm. opening up for me right now yeah that resonates with me a lot because I, I am a questioner, you know, that, that type, I'm a questioner. And so if, if I don't know why I'm doing something like there, I have zero energy to do it. Like yeah. if it doesn't make sense, if there's no purpose to it, I'm just going to be sitting here waiting yeah. for a, re a reason. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it just, because the it, energy it, just does not come. Yeah. It feels like a waste of energy and, you know, a, you know, with, with Saturn, you have to think about limitations. You have to think about, um, you know, energy is finite. Mm -hmm. right? You don't have, um, you know, never ending amounts. So mm -hmm. it's important to understand, you know, where the, where you want to flow that energy yeah. and be clear about why. Yeah. So talk more about Saturn. Let's, let's understand like what is Saturn yeah. about and how does it affect our, our life? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Saturn. Um, so Saturn is the planet of responsibility, self-discipline, limitations, effort. That process of maturation or that process of getting older is Saturnian, right? Um, and Saturn is also about um, you know, in medical astrology, Saturn um, rules the skin and the bones. Mm. And these are structural aspects of the body. The bones keep keep everything attached and upright. And the skin is that limit. It, it's, mm. it places the limitation of this is me and that's everyone else. Mm. So um, Saturn is also um, connected to structure and the structural aspects of life. Um, and that's an important understanding for us to understand the first and the second Saturn return is what is Saturn about? So where you find Saturn in your chart. So when you're born, all the planets are somewhere in the sky. And when you, um, when we interpret that sky through looking at your birth chart, we see where Saturn is. So Saturn has a sign placement 
and a house placement. Mm -hmm. So there are 12 different flavors of Saturn, and we won't get into all the different flavors of Saturn mm -hmm. um, in this conversation, but know that there's different kinds of Saturns. Mm -hmm. And then Saturn is situated in 12 different parts of life. Mm -hmm. So um, Saturn could be in your first house, which represents your, your image and um, how you are, um, how you dawn on people and your body, if it's in your first house. If it's in your second house, um, your seventh house, Saturn is um, about um, your relationships and how you do relationships um, um, based on that Saturn placement. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, so we know Saturn, responsibility, limits, structures. So let's talk about the Saturn return. So it happens every 29 years or so, is that right? Yeah. So most people will be lucky if they see two. 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 And two. then you may be really lucky and see three. Three. Yeah. Yes. So. so a Saturn cycle, and what we mean by Saturn cycle is that Saturn takes roughly 28 to 30 years to make a full rotation back to where it was when you were born. Hmm. And so every, you know, about 30 years, you'll have a Saturn return. Um, and like you said, uh, most of us have two. And then if you're super lucky, if you live until you're 90 years old, you'll have three. Um, and the first Saturn return, it's really important because there'll be echoes of that first uh, Saturn return mm -hmm. throughout those um, those subsequent um, Saturn returns. Mm -hmm. So for the first Saturn return, I like to think of it as your initiation into adulthood. Because mm -hmm. Saturn is all about adulting, right? Mm -hmm. The hard things of life, the things that you have to take responsibility for. And so when you think about when you're, you know, late 20s, 28 to about 30, you know, so far um, you've been working towards something, right? In our current uh, societal structures, usually you're working towards marriage, maybe working towards kids, work, your career, you're building up a career through um, various levels of education. So that's traditionally um, what you've been leading up to. And, and if you're, if you've navigated your Saturn return um, up until that point, if you've navigated your Saturn, you know, challenges well, um, Saturn return can be, the first Saturn return can be a time of experiencing um, rewards and accolades. So if you've been building up a career and by the time you're 28, 30 is usually when you gain more responsibility. Um, maybe you're in a leadership role at work and this is the time that um, you're no longer a, uh, a new professional, mm -hmm. right? This is a time of you, you're fully launched into your career life, you're fully launched in your family life, um, other Saturnian aspects of that life. Mm -hmm. But not all of us track in that direction, right? So I'm not married, I have no kids, so I did a different kind of Saturn return. My Saturn return was mostly about work and career. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious about yeah. you. Um, my first Saturn return, I adopted a dog <laughs> and that was my I remember the responsibility I did I was like this means that I'm going to be driving across the country I'm not going to be flying anytime mm -hmm. I wanted to go somewhere you know and I took it really seriously and that's yeah it was like okay I'm like I'm mm -hmm. old enough and I'm stable enough to adopt this creature who needs my mm -hmm. everything to yeah. survive. So yeah, it was. Um, and then I also had a really around that time strong um, pull to move back to my hometown. Like I had been traveling, mm -hmm. I'd been abroad, I'd been traveling across the country and living other places. And then around that time, I was just like, I need to go home. Mm -hmm. I just I need to come I need to come back home. I just mm -hmm. I felt that pull and cool nothing was <laughs> nothing was working until I got back so you know I just really I, I just felt that big it was a big change because mm -hmm. um it was like a lot of moving around a lot of you know like I moved a lot in my 20s um and then in my 30s I adopted a dog and I was like 
poof, like it was Staying just quiet. like yeah yeah mm -hmm. like yeah I it, it felt like an anchoring mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah um it's really really interesting because also for my sad return I had kind of like a return home to mm -hmm. like that last place that I so I see um a lot of connection there um you know the first Saturn return, and I think Saturn in general for me does touch upon some some grief, because especially during that first Saturn return, you have a lot of possibilities open to you, right? You you could sample lots of different things. If you're dating, you could date different people. Um, you could sample different places to live. Um, but, you know, between that period of 28 to 30, it's like your choices become more and mm -hmm. more limited mm -hmm. or it feels that way. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. It, there's no, there's, there's no longer that, um, bright eyed, bushy mm -hmm. look of like, there's so many possibility open to me that you have yeah. as like a teenager and mm -hmm. in your, in, in your early twenties. Yeah. Um, so we, you know, and there's a lot of grief with that. Mm. And mm -hmm. there's a lot of grief with that, um, that a sad return is an ending and a beginning. Mm -hmm. It's ending that, um, that previous stage of, um, you know, the innocence. Yes. And the, the smorgasbord of life. Let me just sample this, that, and the other thing. Yeah. And it also, though, it gets a little tiring, like yeah. moving around so much for me. I was like, okay, I think I need to sit down for a minute. You know, like you don't, at that point, I was like, I don't need to be sampling all this stuff. I know it's out mm -hmm. there. I right. want to choose something and I want to choose something that I like and let me see how far I can go with it as opposed to, you know, dibbling and dabbling in this, this and that and the other thing. Maybe mm -hmm. I just want to stick and, you know, yeah. take a path and stick with it. And that's, and you've just highlighted another significant aspect of the Saturn Returns. Both of them is there's choices to be made there's decisions to be made mm -hmm. right you have limited your scope of what you know what you think you want mm -hmm. and you're ready to choose and go down a particular path so some people double down on a career you know double down like they settle down <laughs> on the family um so you close the door to that age of being single that age of being independent um, and you, you, you settle into your responsibility of having to contribute to society because that's what ad adulting is all about. Like, um, being that person that contributes not only to, um, family life, but also the greater society through work contributions through work and their career. Mm. And so with that, letting go of that old life there comes grief there mm. yeah. and you have to just sit with that grief. It's part of that sad return because as an adult, not every aspect of being adult is fun and games, right? No. <laughs> some serious. And that's another signification of Saturn is seriousness. Mm. Um, there's a lot of serious aspects to life. And then you're choosing that new path and towards that end of that first Saturn return towards the second is that thing that you've been building that choice mm -hmm. so between 30 years old and 58 to about 60 is when you experience your, your second Saturn return between 58 and 60 but Saturn I know we're highlighting these two um, points of the return the first and the second mm -hmm. but between all of those points, Saturn is still moving. Mm. Saturn is still making connections to its natal placement in your chart. And that's also some places of uh, checkpoints for growth and um, review and evaluation. So it's not like nothing happens between uh, 30 and uh, 50 to 60. Mm -hmm. um, you're still working with Saturn in a very real way. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, at the second time return, whatever you've been doing whatever you've been building because that first sign return you've you've chosen what you're going to be building your life mm -hmm. into 
And so, so now the report card comes, hmm. you get a test, you get a review from Saturn, oh. and now you get to see um, what you've been up to, whether or not it's giving you what you were hoping, right? Mm -hmm. So we have the greatest plans of what we think life is gonna be. And we set out to make it happen. And during that second um, Saturn return, have you, what have you done? How did it go? Yeah. What were some of your lessons learned? And again, what are you ready to let go of? Mm -hmm. And um, what, what, what are you ready to um, choose for the next cycle? Yeah. And I've worked with clients for the second sign return. Usually um, clients are dealing with, um, they're retiring from, from that work, that career that they've been building up for the last 30 years. Mm -hmm. um, it's a sense of completion in that. But also I see um, women in that age group, 50 to uh, 60, they're also starting their own businesses. Mm -hmm. So it's not the end. Yeah. It's the, an end of something, mm -hmm. but the beginning of something else. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's also, um, during this time, it's also kind of when you're letting go, maybe fam um, your children mm -hmm. um, have been launched into the world. Mm -hmm. They've, they're off to college. So mm -hmm. you're letting go of that responsibility also of uh, child care, which... I'm not a, I'm not a mother, but I believe it's probably never ending, mm -hmm. but you know, as they're the day to aware, day, mm -hmm. yeah, it, that's, yeah. you're letting go of that mm -hmm. and you have more space and time back to yourself because mm -hmm. not all of it is so much wrapped up in parenting. Mm -hmm. Not all of it is wrapped up in that career that you've built. So now there's a choice to be made. And part of that, um, and I call it the second Saturn return, um, an initiation into um, the wise elder. Mm -hmm. So there is a thought now because you have less years ahead than you do behind. Mm -hmm. There's a thought about legacy mm -hmm. and um, doing things that are really for you. So taking our responsibilities, not for other people, not for someone else's vision of uh, an organization, a company. No, it's about you. Mm -hmm. So um, there's a sense of, um, you know, being really selfish in these, uh, in a good way. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm all about that. <laughs> uh, there's a sense of, um, you know, being, you know, about taking on responsibilities that will serve you entirely and you know there's also um a thought to uh, your legacy as well which can um, contribute to others as well but you're not just choosing anything right you are centering yourself mm. you know we should always center ourselves but the second sign of return is is that time that we that we really do especially if we have not learned that lesson mm -hmm. um previously yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, at 58 to 60, you're, you are faced with the fact that you are not young anymore. You cannot deny the fact you are not young anymore. You're not exactly old, but you're not, you're not young, you know, spring chicken. So let's just face the facts. There's a lot of, there's a lot of facts you have to face that, you know, that come with, you know, late middle age, I guess, 58 to 60, um, and you also have to assess what's working, what's not, and how do I get rid of the things? How do I transform the things or how do I give away the things <laughs> that aren't working for me anymore? You know, that's a, mm -hmm. that's a big, um, it's a big review. It right. feels like a review of, you know, look around your life, look around every aspect of your, you know, your career, your relationships, everything. And you kind of like, I don't think this is yeah. working. Yeah. And it's a sobering review. Mm -hmm. You're not going to lie to yourself. Mm -hmm. um, the, you know, the Saturn, Saturn doesn't lie to us. Like Saturn is very, a cold, sober look of like, this is reality, right? Mm -hmm. We, we know our bodies have mm -hmm. limits mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. Yep. Saturn. So you can feel that. And you could feel it. And that maturation process, Saturn, um, you see it. Mm -hmm. You see it in your skin, your hair, mm -hmm. like you, mm -hmm. your body shows it. Yep. 
Um, there's no denying. And yes, we have technology that helps with that. And, mm. um, you know, if you've, you know, there, there is stuff that, that you can do, yeah. um, you know, staying healthy and all that, mm -hmm. but, but still, yeah, it's, it's, it's like, um, a house that you've had for many years and it, it, you know, there's, it's re renovation time. Yeah, It's time to renovate. It's time to take out some of those old appliances and update, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um, update to new ones. So this is a great time of like, what's your, like, how do you want to update your life? Yeah. yeah. That's funny because I have literally replaced almost every system in my house over the past two years, like new AC, new hot water heater, new boiler, new roof, like <laughs> that sounds like my house myself. Like, yeah. 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 It's great how like your home is like reflection of you. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that, that, that's perfect. Mm. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So what are some good ways that, that we can move through our second Saturn return with some kind of ease and, um, learn the lessons that that we need to learn okay um first um is about checking back to that first saturn return mm -hmm. what literally happened during those three years um, our saturn return is not just a one-time thing and it, it's it takes about two to three years for you to go through it mm -hmm. so look back and write down what happened what were the scenes? So what literally took place and, and what were the themes? And were, what were the decisions that you made during that time? Mm. Because the decisions you made fed into that, um, into the second Saturn return. Mm -hmm. So once you have like a clear picture of what that looked like for you, that first Saturn return, um, sit with that and see what the echoes are. Are there any similarities that are popping up, mm -hmm. right? Um, were, were there any decisions that you put off making back then that now are coming up for you to, um, to decide about again? Mm. Um, so that that's the, the most important thing. Second, um, know that it's going to end. And because, and this is why I love astrology, um, it helps us know when something's going to start, but it also knows, help us understand that something's going to end. Mm. And that helps us move through some, move through a thing that's difficult with ease. Cause we're mm. like, there, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. This mm. is not forever. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think understanding that this is going to eventually come to an end mm. will help you feel uh, more at ease with it. Yeah. Um, and, and also the grief, because I, I brought this up a little bit. Um, if you are experiencing a lot of grief during your Saturn return, either maybe you're mourning the things that you're losing, the things that you're releasing, that's just a natural, even, though, even if we choose to let go of certain things, mm -hmm. it's just natural that we're going to be sad about it, mm -hmm. natural that we're going to grieve it. Mm -hmm. So understanding that is important, but work with someone right? Mm. If it's becoming overwhelming, it's becoming too much, um, make sure that, you know, you're getting the proper support and whatever that looks like for you. Mm -hmm. um, so that's um, really important. And in terms of like health, the body, because we say the body has limits, mm. it's a great time to, to, um, to look at any um, health issues mm. and um, choose, decide, um, to lead a healthier lifestyle or to do mm -hmm. something about those health issues that pop up because yeah. they're not going to go away. Right. They're not going to go away. Right. That's a choice. Yeah. You can choose how to, how to deal with, with the aging body in a way that, that helps the body. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And yeah. then finally, I, I think it's important to, you know, we talked about that updating, um, you know, choosing that new thing. Um, take some time to explore. You don't have to make the concrete decisions um, uh, during your sand return, mm. um, but 
you know, and towards the end of it, you will be well on your way towards a singular thing. Mm -hmm. But um, you could use those uh, two and a half to three years to explore what you might want to do next. Mm -hmm. You know, do you want to start a business? Uh, do, you know, do you want to work for yourself? Um, do you uh, do you want to um, travel? Um, and if you like, what do you want to contribute to? the folks that are um, the younger folks, um, the younger generation, like how can you make the place that we live in better than how you, how you saw it? So, mm -hmm. you know, the thinking about legacy, but also exploring, you know, what do you want to do for yourself at this point? Yeah, I'm thinking about the, my first Saturn return was a moment where I sort of said I had been working in an, as a sort of um, facilitator for other people, helped a lot of people, you know, did a lot of that work. And I, at one point I was like, okay, <laughs> like I've helped a lot of people. Like, why don't I help myself? You know, like I, I, I wanted to keep doing the work and I wanted to help myself at the same time. Like I didn't want to keep like, oh, I'm going to help this person. Then they surpass me, help this person. They surpass me. You know, mm -hmm. like I, I kept seeing that. And I was like, okay, I'm going to do this for myself too. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that that will be echoed in, in the next phase is mm -hmm. where I make sure that, you know, I'm mm -hmm. rising. If how, whatever, whatever that looks like, you know, I'm right. getting the fruits of my own labor. Right. Yeah. 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 You're, you're supporting your own development. Yeah. 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 yeah absolutely. Love that. Yeah. So, um, moving on to these retrogrades, and we're in this moment. It, and again, like you say, these things pass. They have a they have a moment, and then they pass on. But right now, it's it's just like six planets in retrograde, and uh, I don't know. Everybody kind of tends to lean really heavy on on it. Like I'm like, oh, the technical issues of this video are because <laughs> the six planets are in retrograde. But I mean, can you can you talk about how how that might really affect us or what we need to? Yeah, know? absolutely. And having this many planets retrograde at the same time isn't that rare. Mm. Um, it's almost annual at this at this point. Mm. Um, so retrogrades, we could just introduce the topic of retrogrades. So retrogrades is a it's a phenomenon based on our perspective here from Earth. So the planets are not actually moving mm -hmm. backwards. <laughs> it's like when you're driving in a car and like another car passes you, you feel like that slight. So it's it's like that. Um, it's due to the planet kind of slowing down its speed. So it looks like it's going backwards, but it's not really. Um, and for the planets that are closer to the Earth, um, Mercury, Mars, and Venus, they happen very regularly. So um, Mercury goes retrograde every, uh, four times a year. Um, v Venus goes retrograde every 18 months. And then Mars goes retrograde roughly every two years. Um, and then the outer planets um, are the planets a little bit further out from the sun, um, from the Earth. So we have um, Jupiter and Saturn, they go retrograde every year and they're retrograde um, months at a time. Oh. And then you have Uranus, uh, Neptune and Pluto, and those are the outer planets. And they retrograde also regularly once a month and months at a time, almost half the year Pluto, like five to six months Pluto is retrograde. Um, but they vary in terms of degrees to their impact on us. So the planets that are closer to us, like um, Mercury, Venus, and Mars, we we tend to feel them um, mostly um, because these are we call them personal planets in astrology. Um, Mercury deals with all the things that are communications related, listening, processing of information. Mercury is related to, te to technology, so we are a world that is. Um, that evolves around, revolves around um, technology and communication. So we feel it when Mercury goes retrograde, right? But then on the other spectrum, say like Pluto, 
Pluto is a very, very, very slow moving planet. And it's a transpersonal planet. So that means its influence is usually transpersonal. It, it's more collective. It tends to deal with the things that are happening on that global stage. Um, yes, Pluto also does have a personal effect. Um, but largely, we don't feel it because it moves so slowly. And when Pluto does go retrograde, we don't really notice in our everyday lives as much as we do Mercury, um, Venus, or Mars. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And do you want me to talk about dealing with? Yeah. yeah. Like, uh, I know you're supposed to back up your back up your data and, you know, I don't know, don't sign any contracts during Mercury retrograde or something like that. I don't know. Yeah. All of this, yes, th those are the things that you normally hear astrologers say about um, a Mercury retrograde. Um, but I have a different take on it um, because I, I see what's happening in the skies as a reflection on us. And I see it more as an opportunity for um, personal development and um, using those energies um, for our own, like, benefit of growth and evolution. Mm -hmm. So Mercury retrograde isn't such um, a bad thing if you know how to um, navigate it. And when Mercury goes retrograde, it's an important time to slow down, mm -hmm. slow down. And there, instead of pulling in new information because Mercury is that planet about information, information gathering, but it's also about the processing of, of information. And the, those are the two sides of Mercury, the mm -hmm. input, the analysis, and then the output, right? Mm -hmm. So when Mercury goes retrograde, um, we're largely focused on the analysis of information. So let's say if you're in the midst of a research project, right? It's a good time to stop collecting um, new sources. It's a great time to analyze whatever you have already on your plate mm. um, and, and be in that process of slowing down, of thinking, of um, reviewing. It's all the R words related. Mm -hmm. Review, revise mm -hmm. is all related to Mercury um, retrograde. So okay. you want to think about slowing down, deal with what you already have on your plate, is super 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 important during uh mercury retrograde mm. and the point what is the point of all of this i like to believe the point of all of this is so that we could catch up right so if we're always um if mercury is always moving direct and um the energy is always forward you don't have um that time to really deal with that information that you do have so i'm I'm happy that Mercury retrogrades four times, four times a year, because it does, it does give us a time to to just deal with the things that we've already um, committed to, mm. or um, things that we know that we don't want to keep doing, but we just haven't had the time to figure out how to stop doing what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just a great, great season if you um, if you align with it in that in that way. There is a trickster aspect to Mercury, and that's what a lot of astrologers talk about with like, you know, mm. technology going awry and all that mm. stuff. And I think that is true. That is um, definitely true. And if you've built in space into your schedule, um, then when something does happen like that, it's not as flustering because... Mm you know this it's mercury retrograde things like this do happen mm. um and you've allowed that space for it um it's like we're during mercury retrograde if you're able to align with it you're more resourced to deal mm -hmm. with the issues that do pop up right that is connected to that period yeah mm -hmm. actually so i recently have been sort of pulling all my journals um from past years and Put, I have a stack of them near my desk and I'm like, I'm going to sit down and read all these journals because I know there's a lot of like really good insight in there, 
but you know I'm I've been like putting stuff into the writing and writing and taking notes and you know squirreling stuff down in the middle of the night and you know but I never go back to it so this is a perfect time it sounds like to do that just like what uh, what's been in my on my mind for the past two years or three years or how many journals I have yeah, yeah exactly you know it's it's a slowing down to go forward mm -hmm. Um, so it, it's useful. Like, don't think that this time is just, you know, uh, a throwaway period. It's crazy. And you're just waiting from right, you know, um, to go direct. Don't do that. Like really anchor into that. Take advantage of um, this particular time because mm -hmm. it's really helpful for, for just that. Because um, there are a lot of things that we yeah, we take notes on, we scribble, mm -hmm. like, but we never really go back to really do the analysis, mm -hmm. to do the digestion, to do the synthesis mm -hmm. of. Um, so yeah, there's just a lot of support there for for us during Mercury retrograde. I really like that. I love I love that approach to it. That's really helpful. Mm -hmm. And I and I view similarly the um, the other um, planetary energies going retrograde. And let's. Let's use a um, an outer planet, for example, um, Uranus. Uh, Uranus's energy, when it when it's transiting your chart, it's all about breaking up the old ways so that new energies, um, new innovative ways could come to being. So um, Uranus is about abrupt change, shock and awe, and it's about innovation. It's mm -hmm. future oriented. Mm -hmm. uh, Uranus is future oriented. So when it's direct, that's what's happening to us, depending on where it is in your chart. Mm -hmm. You're going through a, a period of rebirth, a period of innovating wherever Mercury is working. And for most of us, um, for all of us, it's happening in Taurus right now. And depending where Taurus is in your chart, uh, it will tell, give you more information. And when um, Uranus goes retrograde, as it is now, for example, is the time when you can catch up to all of that new inform, um, new innovation. Mm -hmm. um, it's time of um, things settling for a little bit. Mm -hmm. So you don't feel like you're always in that state of um, reacting to shock. So I always feel when um, Uranus goes retrograde, things calm down a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and then it goes, when it goes direct again, it's when we're, we're doing new things. We're covering mm -hmm. the same ground that Uranus covered when it was direct. But yeah, so all of the retrograde periods can be useful for that. Mm -hmm. um, transition from the external energy to more internal energy and nice. depending on what that planet represents you'll be processing or um, internally um, looking at um, those different aspects of change in your life nice thank you this is helpful actually because there's a lot of sort of you know um panic oh everything's in retrograde eh, everybody you know, <laughs> back it's down the good, hatches <laughs> it's a good thing I I see it as a good thing it's mm -hmm. it's such an important part of development and you know if you look out at nature and we look at our at our seasons we have periods of rest yeah so you could even think of that those retrograde periods of periods of rest mm -hmm. right so um, yeah. we could connect it to our um, fall entering into winter season mm -hmm. where we're just moving things more um, internally things slow down things are not growing as much mm -hmm. but it's like you need that rest you need to be rejuvenated so you could take on the next the next level of growth and the next level of change yeah um so um in some ways it could feel like an incubation period mm -hmm. yeah nice so, yeah, so, so don't freak out. <laughs> okay, good, good. So I want to talk about Medellin, um, mm -hmm. but before we move to Medellin, um, I just wanted to um, give you a chance to tell folks where they can reach you, how they can get in touch with you if they wanted to get a reading from you. Yeah, that, thank you. So um, I am about to launch a new program um, called Illuminate. And it's working with me one-on-one -on -one over a period of uh, months. 
And it's for folks who are going through some of the things that we've talked about today, like a Saturn return, whether it's your first or second Saturn return, or um, you're having Uranus or Pluto um, connect with um, sensitive points in your chart. And you want a um, hand holding, you want guidance from a professional astrologer as you move through what that looks like for you day to day. Mm -hmm. So if this is if that's something that you would be interested in, join my mailing list and we'll leave the information um, down in below. The description. Absolutely. Um, but you can find me at stacyanforrester.com and that's I look forward with to two working R's. with you. Two R's? Yes, two yes. R's and okay. two N's. Stacey ah, Ann okay. Good to know. Yeah. Okay. I'll leave that in the description. All right. Tell me about Medellin. I have never been to Colombia yet. So like what, why did you decide to go to Medellin and what's it like? So I decided to go to Medellin because I heard it was a digital nomad hub. Um, and after being in Mexico for, for six months, I was really looking forward to, to meet more digital nomads like myself. Mm -hmm. So that, that's just how I chose it. Um, and uh, I do speak Spanish and I, this first year of being a digital nomad, I wanted to keep it super easy for myself. Mm -hmm. So I didn't want to deal with a new, a totally new language. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I've been sticking to Spanish speaking countries uh, for this first year. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I love Medellin. It's greener than I thought it would be. Mm -hmm. um, it's a huge, huge city. Um, but there's just so much greenery and the diversity of plant plant life is, is known worldwide. Mm. So it's just a beautiful, beautiful city and there's a lot to do. Um, there's lots of fun things to do. Uh, the most challenging thing about Medellin for me is, is the money. I'm still working out <laughs> to do the conversion in my mm -hmm. head. Mm -hmm. It's, it's just crazy wild dealing in, um, millions of dollars oh. or Colombian pesos. Okay. Yeah. Millions of it's, pesos. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Millions of pesos to mm. just get wrap my brain around uh, something cost, um, costing like, uh, 5,000 um, 5,000 million pesos. It's not a lot of money, USD, but um, <laughs> wow. it's wild. So I'm still getting yeah. used to that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, it's it's been a great experience. Yay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Well, maybe I'll, if you're there, maybe I'll, I'll see you there at some point because I, I would love to get to Medellin, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It's just, a, you know, one of the things that I've come to realize about this city, especially, is how much transformation that it, it has gone through. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't have a good depth of the, the economic and political history, um, but what I've learned so far, the Medellin that I find today was in the Medellin um, 10 or 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. And it's very inspiring for me as someone who works in, um, transformation, growth mm. and development to, mm. to see on like a collective level, how the city was able to transform out of those darker days mm -hmm. into um, a more creative, productive, mm -hmm. um, popular um, stage in there. Yeah. 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 Huge transformation. It's, Huge. it's kind of miraculous. Yeah, actually. Yeah. 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 Very inspiring. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you so much, Stacey Ann. I really appreciate your wisdom and experience and insight. So thanks for sharing. Thank you. Yeah. Take care. <laughs>